My name is Wendy Fenton, and I'm the Humanitarian Practice Network Coordinator, and I'd like to welcome all of you, as well as our online audience, to this public event, which we're hosting to launch ne Network Paper 73, Response Analysis and Response Choice in Food Security Crises. The paper was written by Dan Maxwell, Heather Stobaugh, and John Parker, and Megan McGlinchey. But before we start, I just have a little bit of housekeeping to, to do here. Could I ask all of you to turn off your mobile phones if you haven't already? If there's a fire alarm, please go out through these doors, turn right and make your way out the front door outside. And uh, I want to remind you that this is a public event and it's being streamed live online. So we have an online on audience, which we're very happy to have. And there will be both a report and a video of the event posted on the ODI website later probably by the end of this week. And if you're interested in tweeting during or after the event, the hashtag is the sign, response analysis, one word. And after the event, about one o'clock, we're going to have refreshments and networking in room E, which is across the hall, because there's another meeting taking place here afterwards. So I hope that, I hope that most of you will be able to join us. So, we're delighted to have with us today the main author of this paper, Dan Maxwell, who's sitting on my far left. Dan is the research director for Food Security and Complex Emergencies at Tufts University in Massachusetts. He's co-authored two books which address the impact of food aid practice and policy and is the primary author of the paper. Dan's also the primary author of HPN's Good Practice Review 10 emergency food security interventions, and you can find copies of that outside in the hallway along with some of our other publications. So Dan is a, is a valued and frequent contributor to HPN, so we really appreciate the fact that he's able to spend time with us today amongst his busy schedule because he's actually taken time out from another meeting to rush over here to, uh, to give us a presentation. Dan's currently the director of the Master of Arts in Humanitarian Assistance Program, MAHA, at Tufts University. I'm, I'd like to introduce our other distinguished panelists that we have with us today as well, all of whom have had extensive experience of both implementing and analyzing humanitarian responses. On my far right here is Nick Maunder, and Nick is an independent consultant who specializes in humanitarian response, food security, and social protection. Nick's had many years of experience and he's worked with numerous NGOs and governmental organizations and his most recent post was as the coordinator of DG ECHO's sectoral support team in Nairobi. And Simon Levine, who's on my immediate right, is currently a research fellow with the Humanitarian Policy Group at ODI. Simon specializes in livelihoods and vulnerability analysis, land rights and early responses in humanitarian crises and in just being generally provocative, I think. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Simon spent many years working for NGOs in Mozambique, Cambodia, Tanzania, and Burundi before working as a consultant in Uganda for nine years. So we're very happy that Simon is here with us at the Humanitarian Policy Group. And then finally, and last but not least, on my left, is Duncan Barker. And Duncan is a humanitarian resilience advisor in the Humanitarian Disaster and Resilience Policy Group, <laughs> which is quite a mouthful, at uh, the Department for International Development, DFID. Duncan's also had uh, years of experience in a number of different contexts, including Nigeria, Nepal, Tajikistan, and Burundi, with NGOs, as well as in a number of UK-based positions. And he currently works on disaster resilience, specifically looking at how to build better links between humanitarian and development programming and improve the quality of humanitarian response. So we're very happy to have all of you here today. Welcome. But we're going to start with Dan. He's going to give a brief presentation on the paper. You know, what is response analysis and choice and why is it important? And what's actually happening out there in the field? We say we're doing one thing, but I think Dan will show us that we're actually doing something else, and he'll also give us some pointers on what we need to do to improve that. Dan? 